So thanks everybody for joining us today for a books full product tutorial from Zanata. This is one of our premium partners and they've been a very, we'll introduce them here in a little bit, but they've been very involved in the Zoho side and I'll kind of let them kind of tell us a little bit more about themselves here in a little bit. But before that, um, we need to do a few housekeeping, take care of a few housekeeping items, but here is the Zoho finance team. Uh, we have Val Steed, which is our resident CPA. I'll let him introduce himself and tell us a little bit more about him. So. Good morning, everyone. And well, I say good morning. It's good morning, my time. Welcome. And I really appreciate y'all being here. We we love doing these. And we love it when especially we can partner with one of our top partners who we'll introduce here in a few minutes. My goal or essentially my job at Zoho is to lead the charge into the accounting industry for Zoho. And as we're getting more momentum, we're starting to do more events like this, uh, show up at more live events. It's just really an exciting time to be part of Zoho. So very thrilled to be here. I've got a lot of years experience in both the accounting industry, the accounting technology industry, and uh, don't want to bore you with all that. I will say one, one more thing, and I'll turn it back to Nathan here. Uh, apologies mm. on not, no camera today. I've been to the dermatologist, and she did the freeze ray on my yeah. face in places. And if you've ever done that, you look like you've got the pox from – anyway, yeah. it, it's a little scary. Yeah, thanks scary. for so that, we'll Val. No we also have uh, D-Rog, um, <laughs> our lead audio. accountant program. Ahead, He'll be in the background kind of answering questions, any Zoho Books questions you have or Zoho Finance-related questions. And I'll go ahead and let him kind of introduce himself, tell us a little bit more about him. Yeah, thank you so much, Nathan. Uh, and everybody, welcome to this uh, wonderful session by Zanata. Uh, I've been with Zoho for six years now, and uh, I, I work in the accountants team, primarily focusing on CPA. Yeah, thanks, Siraj. Yeah, he's kind of one of those original pioneers with Zoho. So he's been here for, well, with Zoho Books. Uh, he's been here for a while. Definitely a lot of experience on his end. And my name is Nathan Rogerson. I'm in the marketing manager over here at Zoho, and I also help with partner development for the accountant program. And before my background has been five years in accounting. So I've done a lot of it. I have a lot of accounting experience. And um, so that's why I kind of joined the team and I've been here for two years. It's been two years and a week or so. So I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to be a part of Zoho. And I'm happy to have you guys here and gals. Uh, so before we get started, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. So today's webinar is brought to you by the Zoho Finance team, you can go to our website at zoho.com slash CPA. Accountants and bookkeepers are welcome. Um, so today's presentation is in showtime. Like I mentioned, it is uh, recorded. Um, this session does qualify for one CPE credit. And for if anybody who doesn't know what a CPE credit is, it's for uh, continued professional education credits for CPAs. They need that. I don't they need a certain amount every single year. So we put these free sessions on for them so they can get those CPE credits. In order to receive that CPE credit, you must attend for at least 60 minutes, uh, complete three out of the four polling questions. And I'll go ahead and launch a sample of what one would look like. And it just pops up on your screen and you freely answer it. And I would ask that everybody kind of answers it just because it keeps us kind of engaged. Later down the road, we kind of ask something more related to the... Um, the uh, conversation so we can kind of answer something live maybe or focus on a certain area. But yeah, so that's what it is. I can show the results to everybody and it kind of will keep tracking as people vote. So thanks for voting. Um, and also at the very end of the session, if you would like to receive the CPE credit, you need to uh, fill out our evaluation at the end. And also um, if you don't need to receive that CPE, we ask that you do fill that evaluation out. It helps us kind of better improve our webinars going forward and also um, we love to see positive and, and negative feedback as well. Um, before we let Zanata introduce Zanata, I'll kind of tell you a little bit more about Zoho in case you are unaware of what Zoho is. So obviously, by looking at this, you see all these different icons. So it can be very overwhelming. Definitely, it was overwhelming for me at whenever I first started here. But essentially, the way to look at it is we have all these different buckets. So we have sales, marketing, IT, human resources, custom solutions, finance, and email and collaboration. So we have all these different suites, but also uh, you can purchase things a la carte as well. 
But our team, we actually focus on the finance suite. So finance and operations suite. And what that looks like, whenever you narrow it down a little bit more, you have Zoho Books, which is ma mainly our flagship app and everything kind of filters into it. So we have Zoho Expense, so checkout, so inventory, payroll, subscriptions, invoice. So it all kind of filters up to Zoho Books. And today we're actually talking about Zoho Books and kind of doing a deep dive into that. Um, and our team, like I mentioned, we are in charge of the Zoho Finance partner team. And whenever you're looking at the partner team, um, these are our main benefits. There's definitely a lot more. So you have experience with uh, in the cloud. You can network and grow through partners like definitely Zanata. I know they work with a lot of our other partners as well. And they've also expanded outside of the CRM world into the finance realm, in, which is why they hired John. And he's been a very valuable asset for them. And you also get free access to Zo Zoho. So if you'd like to join the partner program, please let us know. I'm going to go ahead and launch the first poll question. Just let us know if you want to join the partner program or if you're interested in it. We can definitely have a conversation. Um, nothing's really required of you. It's just kind of We'll have a conversation, see if you're a good fit, and also seeing how we can help your firm grow. That's a really big part of our partner program is seeing how we can help firms grow. Mm -hmm. You know, our team, too, likes to jump in and help where we can, where we see what you're up to and how you're doing. I mean, for example, partnering with Z Zanata on this uh, webinar, we're, we're thrilled to get help you get articles out or LinkedIn, like uh, posts and comments and direct traffic to you if you're a partner. I mean, we don't just throw you in the deep end of the pool and say swim. So that's Nathan and Diraj. My, that's that's yeah. our team. That's really what we do. And we'll be adding more people to this team because we're growing quite rapidly. So we'd love to have you. And like I said, if if this is something you're you're thinking about or considering, I mean, considering looking out there right now, the entire market of small business, especially entrepreneurs, is growing at just an absolute rapid pace. And there's a great opportunity out there to go mm -hmm. out and help those folks and build a client, you know, accounting service practice. Client yeah, yeah, definitely. Practice. And we also uh, have a webinar on our program. August 24th. Uh, why did I say August? So February 24th. Mm -hmm. And it is over growing your practice through value added services and really that's what Zoho is here for, and that's our competitive advantage. That's what we have to offer is kind of those value-added services. And Zanata is a prime example of how you can really grow a practice into all these different areas, into what the Zoho ecosystem. But without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce Zanata. And I'll let uh, Val kind of introduce them, and then um, Zanata introduce themselves as well. Yeah, I don't want to go on too long here, but let me just say this. We are very thrilled to have Sonata join us yeah. uh, anytime for almost anything. They're really one of our top partners globally, and they do a great job presenting, uh, training, implementing Zoho Solutions. Uh, the U.S. base, very, very, very well focused on, you know, business, uh, small to medium business. I don't know how many enterprises they actually touch. They've been out there for a number of years, like at least nine mm -hmm. years. And they do a lot. They have their own. They have their own podcasts. And a lot of different things they do. So we'd encourage you strongly to. And I'll let uh, John and Tyler introduce themselves. But I would throw in this one little pitch: joining their newsletter and following their podcast is really a smart thing to do. Even if you're another Zoho yeah. partner. Yeah. And if you sorry before I John, they, you introduce yourself. Um, if in you look out in the handout section on the bot the middle left, um, you'll be able to see Zanata's webpage and their YouTube channel. So go check those out, subscribe and um, follow what they have coming along because it, kind of an inside joke with me. Well, it's not an inside joke, but I use them to get hired over here at Zoho. They have a lot of helpful resources. So <laughs> I'll let uh, the Zanata team introduce themselves and tell us what they have going on. Sure. So I'll give kind of a little overview on Zanata. I mean, I think you guys covered just about all of it. Um, so my name is Tyler Colt. I am the executive vice president at Zanata. Um, like the finance team said, uh, we are a premium tier Zoho partner. Um, mm -hmm. We pretty much work across all applications inside of Zoho, other than a few kind of edge cases. Um, we do have a kind of massive YouTube channel where we're putting up content on a weekly you know, basis, generally two or three videos a week spread out across all the different uh, Zoho applications. 
Um, and then recently, we actually brought John onto our team here as well to kind of drive up our finance division. Um, so John, maybe I'll let you introduce yourself here. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name's uh, John Ota. Um, I have about seven years background in accounting, um, and I just joined the team recently, and uh, I've really enjoyed uh, learning about Zoho. Yeah, I kind of, thanks for that, guys, uh, and I kind of forced John to do this webinar, so I appreciate you jumping in here <laughs> and uh, helping us with this. I really do. But I'll let, Tyler, you do have control now, so you yep. can get started. All righty. So with that kind of today, we're going to go through a product overview for Zoho Books, kind of cover the main things that people need to first kind of set up and look at with the application, and then a couple of the use cases that you might find yourself um, interacting with. So as a quick overview of our agenda here, first we'll cover just what is Zoho Books. That part, as you'd expect, is going to go pretty quickly. Um, then we'll pass it to John for a product overview, kind of a walkthrough of what buttons do what inside the product. Um, then we'll jump into the kind of essential settings that you're going to need to look at that'll really affect uh, the usage of the application for your business. Um, then we'll pass it back over to John for a review of setting up the chart of accounts, as well as setting up online payments. And then lastly, we'll close it out walking through the essential kind of sales and purchase process within Zoho Books. Um, so with that, let's jump right on in to our overview here. So Zoho Books is a cloud-based accounting software. Um, kind of like Nathan mentioned, the finance suite of applications with Zoho cover everything from you know, Zoho invoice, subscriptions, expense, inventory, um, really any of those uh, transactional applications. But all of those are going to roll up into Zoho Books as kind of the primary system of record. So it's, it's an important one to get right as you're setting up the finance apps within Zoho. Um, it's available as part of the Zoho One and Zoho Finance Plus bundles, but is also there as a standalone application. We will say oftentimes it works best and you kind of get the maximum value out of it if you are using other applications. Um, last but not least, uh, as kind of direct competitors or you know what you'd be replacing with this are things like QuickBooks, Sage, and Xero. Um, the only one that's important to note is that it's not really like a full force DRP. So if you're on like NetSuite, managing a ton of manufacturing and work in progress, might not have all of those kind of uh, bells and whistles. Um, but for the majority of small to mid-sized businesses, it's going to cover just about everything that they need. Yeah. And uh, sorry to step in here, Tyler. And I think it's important if you're a business who's using one of those ERP systems, just kind of check with a Zoho partner to see what we have available and what kind of um, quirks that we can work through with you. For example, we have a, I'm working with a company who is kind of ERP level and we're able, our dev team is actually able to adjust kind of Zoho books to get it to work for this company. But there's some things in there that you might want to just reach out to a partner to see if it's a good fit. And really they'll be honest with you and let you know exactly what they think yep. would be for you. And the cool thing about books is that it has the same backend um, and the ability to use Zoho Deluge that the other applications have. So there's a lot of abilities to automate and integrate Zoho books with third party services if there are little things that you don't want to house directly within books itself. Yeah, definitely. Um, but with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into a product overview here. So I'm going to pass the controls over to you, John. Should give you a little pop up and then we can jump on in. Okay. okay. So starting off, uh, this is the uh, dashboard when you log into Zoho Books. Um, as you can see here, it gives you a lot of information. Um, you can see total receivables, current, overdue, how they're split up like that, as well as payables. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of where your cash flow is at the time. Um, you can see here if your bank's uh, bank feeds are set up as well, exactly where you're going to be at. Just kind of cash incoming um, and outgoing and where you're at. <clears throat> okay. Uh, first thing over here, uh, we're going to go over items. Um, so this is uh, products that you sell or services that you sell. Um, another thing here is the item groups. So like I said, we're going to go into the items and kind of see what that is. 
Um, as I said before, you can sell either a good or a service. You'll just need a product name and a SKU. Um, SKUs are very important for your integrations with uh, Shopify or other online uh, sales products. Um, the other thing as well is uh, it's going to ask you about dimensions, uh, weight, um, information that you can have here. This is really important when you're integrating with Zoho uh, inventory. So this will help with the setup of um, shipping and what size packaging to use with those products that you're selling. Um, the other thing down here we can see is the uh, sale price. What are you selling it for? As well as the purchase information, how much are you purchasing it for? And that'll help um, kind of flow into when you're creating your invoices and purchasing. Um, when you are selling things, you can have different types of um, <clears throat> income accounts. So you can choose where it's going to go to if it's just your general sales as a product um, that you're selling separately that you want to keep track of so there's a lot of information that you can um, choose uh, when you're setting up your items um, same on the uh, purchasing uh, side here so if you want to keep track of um, certain cost of goods for you know widget a um, versus widget b um, you can definitely set that up in your chart of accounts uh, moving on from there um, in the the items as well. You can set up item groups. So these are similar um, widgets or products that you're selling. Say you may have uh, a hat in five or six different colors and you want to just track the product as a hat um, and you don't really care about what colors you're selling. You just know you want to um, follow what hats you're selling. Then you would set up item groups. <clears throat> Uh, and then down here, um, if you like, uh, they said before with manufacturing, are you bundling products? Are you having raw materials that you're putting together and creating a composite item? So you would use that here to go and create those items there, um, and this would keep track of um, those composite items. <clears throat> Next up is the uh, price list. So if you have certain customers that you know uh, they've been your customer for a long time and you want to cut them some deals. Uh, things like that uh, you can kind of tweak what the prices are for certain people and really um, kind of um, have a good effect on that <clears throat> last thing here in items is the inventory adjustment so um, i know a lot of people that keep track of inventory um, they do their count and they're following it in zoho and they're selling certain things but what happens if say um, you have a loss of product, say it's damage when it comes in, you want to be able to keep track of that and make the changes in Zoho books. So with that, you would go over to the new um, inventory adjustment here. Um, you can do a quantitative adjustment or a value adjustment. So uh, say the products that you purchased now are uh, doubled in price. And so you want to keep track of that inside of your accounting software. You can either make that value adjustment or quantity adjustment. Um, the other thing you wanna do is make sure that you have a good description of why you're changing that. So there's a couple of pre-built in options here, um, or you, I think there's another one as Always well. I love that that's a pre-built um, option. So here. did you <laughs> lose a bunch of your stock in a fire? <laughs> Was it stolen? <laughs> uh, damaged good? Um, did you write off some of the stock because it expired? Uh, things like that. <clears throat> Uh, next up, uh, you can't really have a uh, business without your customers. So um, inside Zoho Books here, you have a list of your customers. Um, this can be tied to your CRM as well with uh, out-of-the-box integration. So in here, uh, if you kind of see, you can see uh, kind of what the client has been doing. Um, here we had some sales orders that we created and deleted um, as practice, <laughs> um, as well as how much they've uh, purchased from you in the last six months. You can kind of set up these um, KPIs to let you know what's going on here. Um, do they owe you money? Um, <laughs> uh, how are they doing? Um, where they're located? Things like that. Uh, next up here, we have uh, estimates. So um, Tyler will kind of be going through this later on with the uh, um, purchasing and uh, sales. Um, so I'll just quickly go over this. Uh, let's see here. Um, after estimates, we have uh, sales orders. So this is kind of the life uh, cycle of a sales order. And as I mentioned, uh, Tyler will be over that later on in more detail here. Um, after sales orders, invoicing, invoicing, um, most probably important part of uh, your books here. Make sure that you get paid. <laughs> um, and again, Tyler will be going over that. And then payment received. Um, let's see here. We have uh, 
the different ways that you can get paid um, <clears throat> through uh, PayPal. Definitely record your offline uh, payments. Banking. You can also record manual or <laughs> offline payments. Yes. <laughs> Um, next up in the purchase section, we have the vendors. So these are who you're purchasing from, um, uh, companies that you're you're dealing with. Um, another cool thing within the vendors is, uh, say there's someone that you need to write a 1099 for later on, they're your consultant or outside services. Um, you can track within Zoho um, the 1099 payment amounts. So that's very important when you're setting up your client or your vendor here, um, if you need to pay them with 1099s to follow that. Let's see here, um, purchase orders. Um, this is kind of the purchase order uh, lifeline, um, creating purchase order, receiving the goods, converting it to a bill, and then recording the payments. <laughs> um, the next section here is the accountant. Um, uh, with the users that you have, you probably don't want to be in here too much, but for setting up your, your books account and um, uh, adjusting things, uh, this is where you'll probably be living. Um, the new thing that they uh, set up recently is this bulk update. Um, so this is kind of exciting. Uh, if you want to um, say you're changing maybe the way your P&L looks, if you want to adjust multiple uh, items and multiple accounts at once, you can do this bulk update. Uh, next up is uh, reports. Uh, this is really cool. Um, you've got a ton of reports out of the box here from Zoho. Um, your profit and loss, your cash flow, um, some of the other ones too. Do you want your inventory summary, um, inventory valuation summary? So kind of between this date and this date, what are we carrying and um, what is it worth? Um, other typical ones, AR aging, um, payments received. Um, so it's pretty cool. There's a lot of reports here. And then within Zoho, if you also have the Zoho analytics, you can get and uh, create even more detailed reporting um, and kind of set that up to be um, automatic as well. There's a lot of automation that can be involved with the reporting. Sweet. After that, I'll turn this back I over to Tyler to go John. over some uh, settings. And then again, we should have a little time here at the end for questions. So if there are any questions on that kind of overview, uh, drop them into that question section while it's fresh here. All righty. And I should now have control again. John, give me a nod if we move slides. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you're, you're moving. Awesome. So um, like with any application, there's going to be a whole bank of settings that you're going to want to take a look at and make sure they're right for your business. Um, so across almost every Zoho app, settings are going to be in the top right under the little cog here. Um, it's going to pull this drop down, but once we actually click into one of these options, like organization profile kind of opens you into a settings page. So out of the gate, of course, you're going to need to set up the profile for your company. You know, what's your organization name, what industry are you in, uh, what address do you have so that that can be displayed on any of your outgoing, uh, you know, documents like invoices, bills, POs. Um, you're also able to then define who that primary contact is, who should be the sender by default. Oftentimes, that's like an accounts receivable, accounts payable address that you want to have as the baseline and standard that you're going to use when you're emailing things out. Um, but those can always be tweaked or kind of set on a per template level as well. Um, after you have set up the uh, organization profile, of course, we're going to need to define all of the opening balances. Uh, this is something you'd want to do right off of the bat when you're setting up Zoho Books for the first time, where you'll run through your AP, your AR, your assets, your expenses, any bank feeds you need, open liabilities, equity, and then income as well. And it'll have you set basically a migration date of, you know, from what date is all of this information going to be accurate and carried forward within Zoho Books. Um, next, we're able to jump into users and roles. In our demo account here, we just have the one. But as you'd expect, you're not going to want every single user to have access to every single section inside of Zoho Books. Um, within here, the role hierarchies and ability to show and hide those sections are very, very granular. So you could do things like set up a user who's only in that allowed to send invoices to customers that they're the salesperson for. Right. You might have an accountant that comes in here that isn't even a part of your company, but based on their roles can see just about everything across the organization. Uh, we're going to skip warehouses. That's kind of more of a Zoho inventory thing, which could be its whole own separate session. 
Um, under preferences here, you've got a whole bunch of standards, right? So of course you can turn off any of the modules that you don't need. Um, you can determine if you want to integrate this with Zoho inventory, which then shows things like warehouses and packages and you know physical receives against your purchases. Um, in this preferences list here, uh, we're not gonna go line by line through the entire thing, it would take just a little too long. Um, but in essence, in any of those records, like estimates, sales orders, invoices, the settings are gonna allow you to create custom fields, um, determine if partial payments should be allowed, um, set up notifications when things are approved or when things happen. And you can define all of those within your general preferences section here. Um, next, within Zoho Books, you can set up uh, that you have to collect sales tax. Um, you can either do this manually by kind of creating a tax table and associating it to particular customers or locations. We strongly, strongly, strongly recommend just integrating with Avalara. That's just going to handle everything for you. So that regardless of where you are and where your customers are, sales tax is always going to be calculated correctly. Um, and it's just going to take a whole big mess of manual labor off of you if you do choose to integrate with Avalara. And no, they're not giving me a cut to say that. It's just a really, really good tool and it's going to save you pain and suffering. So we like to highlight that around the tax management here. Um, next, under the uh, kind of templates and emails section here, uh, templates is where you're going to go to design and edit any of the PDF templates that you're using. So when you actually send an invoice out, uh, it'll create a digitally viewable version and a PDF viewable version for the customer. And the design of those are going to be determined here within the templates section. Um, that can be really important, especially for estimates, because uh, as we'll walk through a little later, those can be accepted and declined. So you really want to define those, make them look pretty, kind of you know make them uh, match your overall brand and your look and feel. Um, under that section as well is where we can go ahead and edit email templates, uh, turn off and on certain reminders that we want to have go out. And then there's also our automation section there at the bottom of the red box. Um, that's kind of where you would go to set up a lot of custom actions. So something like when a sales order gets confirmed, automatically create an invoice. Or when a package gets marked as shipped, look at the related sales order and make an invoice for that at the point of package shipment. So it's kind of a lot of those types of automations and if then statements. And that's generally where we end up kind of plugging in and helping people out in writing that custom code. Um, next here, we've got our online payments section. John's kind of going to cover that in a little bit more detail, but under settings is where you'll go to actually set that up. And then under our integrations, um, we've got a variety of integrations for Zoho Books. Um, under shipping, of course, we're going to integrate with Aftership as well as UPS and USPS. Um, there's also one kind of under the fold here with Easy Ship, which is a platform you can use to generate your labels. That's going to integrate with a variety of shipping options as well um, and can save a lot of time. So we advise taking a look at that as well here within Zoho Books. Um, and with that, we've kind of gone through our overview of settings. Of course, there's a lot there and a lot more that we could dive into over time, but we wanted to give you just an overview of kind of the core elements that you'd be taking a look at as you get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to John, who can cover the chart of accounts. Or actually, Nathan, looks like you might want to do a poll. Yeah, I'll go ahead and launch our second poll question. Thanks for that, Tyler. Mm -hmm. um, and FYI, everybody, if you have a question, ask it in the um, questions tab. That way... If anybody wants to sift through that, the answered questions, they can do so. So we can kind of keep track of it that way. I'm seeing a few things in there that I could just answer in there, but there's no someone, you know, comments right before I answer and then it kind of gets lost in the, the, the chat. But I appreciate y'all being engaged and asking questions. So my question, my poll question was, have you ever used Zoho Books before? Um, 34 are saying yes. Uh, no, this is their first experience. I probably should have said in there too. Um, yes, but like a while ago, or I haven't used it very much, but, um, I did see one question in there about migrating over into Zoho books from QuickBooks. It's a very easy process. Um, it, the only thing I would recommend, I actually talked to a customer yesterday about this is she wanted to migrate over into Zoho books and she's not necessarily super tech savvy. And so I just kind of let her know just from my experience, and I'm sure John's seen this too in the past. If you don't have some sort of consultant or accountant 
at least look over your work. If you if you don't want to necessarily pay for them to do the whole migration, have them at least look over your work at the end because there might be something you're missing. And if you say don't take care of that for like a year, a couple of years, then someone like John's going to have to go through it and sift through it and essentially be a detective and see what went wrong. And that's the biggest. So <laughs> that's whenever you will end up paying a lot for um, consulting and also an accountant to come in and you will not be happy about it. So definitely have someone look at it in the beginning because if they do, they'll be able to catch mistakes or just have them do it first off. So you don't even have to worry about that at all, but I'll let uh, John. So it looks like we're a little bit less than 50% of people who are experienced in Zoho books. So this is a great lesson for them. Yeah. And also this session is recorded. So you'll be able to go backtrack and uh, be just stay connected with our YouTube channel as well and Zanata's YouTube channel to kind of see more about Zoho Books. Um, but John, yeah, you're good to go. Okay. Uh, so jumping back in here, uh, we're going to go over the uh, chart of accounts. Uh, if any of you are uh, accountant backgrounds, then you know this is a very important part of uh, your books and your financials. Um, so in here, Zoho comes out with a lot of out of the box, mm -hmm. um, kind of your typical ex um, assets, uh, expenses, liabilities. Um, mm -hmm. But if you find something in here that doesn't kind of fit your needs, uh, you can always create new accounts. Uh, when you go into there, uh, you can pick your account type. Uh, like I said, there's assets, other assets, current liabilities, uh, long-term liabilities, uh, just the different types of um, kind of chart of accounts accounts that you want to look for. Um, something that's a little bit different than um, well, uh, than QuickBooks is the way they handle sub accounts. Um, so here, um, kind of like parent accounts is what they're calling QuickBooks, I believe. Uh, you can make sub accounts of certain uh, items. So here, for example, um, we're doing uh, the account name is going to be fuel and that's an automobile expense. And so it's going to be underneath the automobile expense and kind of keep track of those things separately while also uh, subtotaling up as a total auto expense. So you can have a couple different things here. So say you want to do repairs and maintenance on your auto as well as the fuel or say um, maybe you have uh, um, a mileage reimbursement you want to keep track of. You can kind of keep track of all of that underneath the yeah. uh, parent account of automobile expense. Uh, next part, another way to add uh, into your chart of accounts is through the uh, banking section here. So if you have a credit card or a bank account that you want to add in uh, to your chart of accounts, it's very important um, that you do that since, uh, you know, money in, money out. That's the basis of uh, your books here. Um, pretty simple uh, process here. You're going to connect uh, a bank or credit card. Um, it's pretty awesome. They have a ton of already kind of pre-built integrations in Zoho uh, to add the different types of bank accounts. Um, you can even see your PayPal, um, you know, the electronic uh, payment um, applications here. So um, you can do that, uh, add that in. Um, it does uh, have a couple um refreshes that you need to do while you're going through the process. So sometimes if you add an account, you'll pop back in and you'll look and you'll say, that, oh, I just added that. Why am I not seeing that? Uh, could be up to, to 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and you just kind of want to wait and refresh and wait for that to come through. Uh, next up here, online payments that we mentioned before. Um, so Zoho has some pre-built in integrations um, that you can integrate with a couple different um, services. So for the uh, credit and debit card, there's Stripe, uh, WePay, Forte, Square. Um, Forte is pretty cool as well because um, not only can you accept payments, you can also use that to make payments out um, to your vendors um, and, uh, and any expenses that you have here. Um, for ACH, Stripe, Forte, Authorize.net is a new one. <clears throat> Um, with PayPal, it uses all levels of PayPal. Um, so if you have PayPal, uh, PayFlow Pay Pro or Payments Pro, you can use those as well as just your generic uh, PayPal account. 
Um, the other one as well is this ideal um, offered through Stripe. That's uh, another payment um, vendor payment you can uh, have. <clears throat> Oops. Oh, sorry. Um, next, I'm going to hand it back to Tyler to go over here, the sales process. Good. Um, so the sales processes here in Zoho are um, pretty slick. It's one of the things that we oftentimes find um, people really enjoy and kind of like how this works inside of books. So diving into the sales process um, within Zoho Books, it generally is going to start with an estimate. I will highlight you don't technically have to start with an estimate, but they are pretty useful if you so choose to. So looking at the kind of life cycle here, you know, you're going to create this estimate and I'll show that in just a moment. You're going to send this estimate to the customer digitally, which will give them the ability to open it in a web page or download it as a PDF. And then from that email that's been sent to them, they can either accept or reject this estimate. So one of the nice things about this is that it kind of gets rid of some of the back and forth of <clears throat> a salesperson sends an estimate the customer emails back, says, this looks good. And then the salesperson goes into the system and marks it as accepted. Um, with Zoho Books, you kind of give the customer the ability to actually just accept that. Um, working within that kind of automation section we quickly talked about earlier, we can use the acceptance of that estimate to make other things happen. So if when an estimate is accepted, we need to notify the purchasing team of what was per or what is on that estimate so they can make a PO and buy it that can all get automated just based on this uh, specific record. So let's say we wanted to create an estimate here. I'll go ahead and open up a new one. Um, up at the top, as we would expect, we're gonna have to associate this estimate to a particular customer. Um, it's gonna pull in the billing and shipping address for that customer automatically for you just once you open it. Um, moving down the page, of course, it's going to auto assign itself an estimate number and an estimate date and the salesperson down here below inside of this red box is actually where we're putting in our items. So you can assign a variety of different items and or services on one estimate. Um, oftentimes we find for like, um, you know, people doing field service management or people that are kind of on site implementers, they're sending out estimates that have, you know, like these three or four composite items that make that are made up by a bunch of sub items bundled with some additional services for like the man hours to fulfill. And that can all just be displayed on one estimate with a grand total that can be accepted. Um, once you have actually filled in all your items and associated your customer, you can send this out. And let's say that we've now sent our estimate and they have accepted it. So we'll see we've got our accepted tag here. Um, you kind of have two options that you'll see up in the top right. And this really will just depend on your business. Um, so you can either convert this estimate to a sales order, or you can convert it directly to an invoice. Um, really, the main thing that we've seen that will define which one you need to do is um, if you are working with any like physical products that you might need to raise a PO for, you definitely are going to want a sales order or if you're dealing with any physical products that you're gonna to wanna to ship, you're definitely going to want a sales order. If you're a service only business, you can very likely get away with just converting the estimate directly to an invoice. Um, in this case, we're gonna go ahead and convert it to a sales order, kind of go through the whole process here. So now we'll see over on the left, we're in the sales order section. And over on the right here, we have a sales order that matches that estimate. So it's assigned to the same customer. It's got the same product and the same total. Up here in the top right again, we now have that option to convert to an invoice to open our receivable, as well as convert to a purchase order if we needed to purchase for this. If you're holding a lot of inventory, you don't have to convert this to a sale or a purchase order. Um, you'd only really need to do that if you're like, if you wanted to backfill or if you were drop shipping or something like that, where you needed to actually purchase to fulfill a specific sales order. Um, for our purposes here, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to an invoice. And now we have our invoice here that can be sent to the customer. Similar to the estimate, they can digitally pay this online. Um, so they don't need to send you a check unless they want to. Um, and any of those online payment options that uh, John covered earlier are going to be available for them to actually make a payment to this invoice. So conceptually, um, the only thing to really you have to decide on here is if you need those sales orders. 
And you can think about them kind of as a link between the um, like accounting side of the transaction with your receivable and the physical side of the transaction with the actual packaging and shipment of the product if you need to do that. All righty. And so now let's say that we wanted to go ahead and convert this over to a purchase order. Actually, I might skip these slides here. Yeah, let's go ahead and skip forward just a little bit. I want to leave some time for questions at the end. So let's now jump into the purchase processes. So we've now gone through, we have made an estimate, we've converted it to a sales order, and lastly, converted it to an invoice that we're able to send out and receive payment. Um, on the purchasing side, there's kind of a similar flow, um, but it looks like, Nathan, you might want to do a poll. Yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Um, I will launch the third poll question and kind of wanted to catch it before Tyler got into a different topic so I didn't have to interrupt him. Um, but yeah, there are, we are getting quite a few questions and uh, one of them I'm seeing right now is kind of the, what it looks like as far as connecting CRM and um, Soho Books. Just, just to let you know, um, you will, the whole point of the kind of the seamless integration is that you can put the information in one application and it goes over to the other um, for some of the individuals who have been asking that. So they're, and it really saves a lot of time and automation. That's what really helps out. Um, if you have like a sales team and accounting team where they don't necessarily have to reach out to each other and double enter. And it really takes away from um, that kind of backtracking work. And for people like myself and John, well, not myself anymore, but it really helps out an accountant so they don't have to call a salesperson and ask them a million questions to see what's going on with a certain transaction yep. or something. But yeah, yeah. so I just asked uh, what area in your accounting software do you spend the most time in? And um, this is great news. Um, everybody's spending the most of their time in sales. So that's awesome, right? That's where you're making money and that's uh, where you're keeping track of your invoices for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, what... Um, well, actually, I think that's what you're about to cover right now. And also the accountant area as well and reports and very useful for sure. Yep. Well, anyways, I'll let you kind of continue on. Uh, thanks for answering the polling questions and I'll let y'all keep going. Perfect. Tyler? And yeah, I'll just kind of end cap what you're talking about there. We've found that if you're looking at Zoho as a whole, the way that the CRM and the book suite work together is oftentimes a deciding factor. So everything you're sh I showed you there with an estimate, a sales order, an invoice, that can mm -hmm. all actually be done from a deal or opportunity within the CRM. Mm -hmm. And it's all mm -hmm. instantly going over to Zoho Books. Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. had customers before that come in where a salesperson makes a sale and then they're writing out an email to accounting of what the invoice needs to be that mm -hmm. needs to go out. Whereas with Zoho Books, they can just make the invoice. It goes through an approval process and books and then it's sent out mm -hmm. to the customer. And you're just eliminating like whole back and forth via email or text mm -hmm. communicating about what needs to happen. Yeah, definitely. And also, um, yeah, I mean, there's so much going on with Zoho and I don't want to add any more to it, but there's a lot of different ways that Zoho can help a business automate a lot of processes. And this is why I think it's so important to kind of to connect with some sort of consultant in the first stage of your business process with Zoho, just because a lot of Zoho's complications are just not knowing what's out there and um yeah. you can really improve your business in a lot of ways by just implementing simple automations like tyler's talking about but i'll let you continue perfect all righty so let us go ahead here and jump into the purchasing process here um so first we'll do one that kind of stands alone which is the expense um so as you'll see here zoho as we were taking these screenshots at the bottom of the page is uh, suggesting hey if you're going to do expense management with Zoho, go ahead and take a look at Zoho Expense. It's really, really good. If you're on Zoho One, it's included with your subscription and everything is going to feed directly into Zoho Books uh, automatically. So if you are Zoho One, do all of this in expense, but the reporting and tracking is going to end up being the same. Uh, it's just going to be a lot easier. But essentially, right, the life cycle of an expense is that that expense is incurred. Um, that expense can then be recorded. If you're using Zoho expense, again, the credit card is going to automatically create this expense record and assign it to whoever is responsible for that card. 
Um, nice thing about books is that if you are like a service business or an implementer, um, some of your expenses might actually be billable to a client. Um, so within Zoho Books, you can actually define that an expense is billable. And if it is, convert it to an invoice to actually get reimbursed on that. Otherwise, it would just be logged as a non-billable expense. Um, creating an expense is pretty easy, right? It's got a date. It's got an expense account it's going to. It's going to have to have an amount. And then it has a paid through, which is basically where the money is going to come from in order to pay the employee back for that expense. Um, you can also associate an expense directly to a vendor or to a customer. And if you were going to do invoicing, if this was like a billable expense, you would surely want to associate it to that customer so that the um, invoice would go to the right person. Now, last but not least, over on the right hand side, you'll see a drag and drop to upload file. If you would like to capture images of receipts or anything like that, you, they can attach those here. Again, use expense, use Zoho expense if you're doing this. With the Zoho expense app, they can just take a picture of the receipt and this whole thing kind of just happens. It'll even read it and associate the vendor. So if it was a certain restaurant, there'll be a vendor. Um, very, very, very slick how that works. But if you are doing them manually, totally doable here inside of Zoho Books. Um, now we'll kind of jump into the purchasing process as it retains more from like an inventory or kind of larger purchase, like a vendor purchase perspective. Um, so life cycle of a PO, it's basically going to be raised. So you're going to open up a PO for a certain set of items um, that's going to be against a certain vendor. Um, once you have uh, converted that to open, meaning you've kind of sent them this PO, eventually you can say that I have received the goods. That would be like your physical accounting. I have it in my warehouse, even if I haven't paid for it. Um, and then you also have the option to convert it to a bill, which is how you would tell Zoho Books that I've now paid for this purchase order. Um, because at the end of the day, depending on your relationships with vendors, they might ship you product long before you pay for it. And that can all be kind of managed um, with the two records being the purchase order and the bill. To create a purchase order, it looks almost identical to creating an estimate. So we'll go ahead and open it up. We'll associate it to a vendor rather than to a customer. We'll see that that kind of second section under deliver to, we can deliver it to our warehouse or we could actually associate this to a customer. So if you are doing drop shipping, it actually works great. So you could actually have a sales order, convert it directly to a purchase order and then ship it to the customer and never have to touch the product. So if you are kind of in that space, worth taking a look at that functionality here because it works really well. Um, last but not least, kind of running down the page, you've got your expected delivery dates, payment terms, and then of course, all of your items that you're actually submitting the PO for. Um, now, hopefully if you're good at purchasing, you're not buying things one at a time here, that wouldn't be super efficient, but we'll use that as our example. Um, now that we have a PO that's been created, um, similar to our estimates and sales orders, you kind of have the ability to convert this record to new records to represent what's happened. So if I've physically received it in my warehouse, I'll go ahead and run a receive. Um, once I'm ready to pay for it, I'll convert it to a bill so that I can mark it as paid. Um, again, the receive side of things is more of an inventory functionality from the Zoho inventory side. Won't go too deep into that. Essentially, you would click that button and mark what you've received and what you haven't, and that's gonna increase your physical stock. Um, we're gonna focus on the bill side of things here. So overall life cycle of a bill, um, we have submitted our PO, that's our purchase items here. Uh, then we're recording a bill for that. Once the bill is open, we can record that we've paid it partially or that we've paid it fully. Um, so of course, payment terms vary sometimes by vendor and you might be paying once a month for 12 months. You might be paying net 365, right? Regardless of what you have going on on your kind of vendor relationship side, uh, the POs and bills can be customized to uh, work with that. So from there, you've got your bill open. Now I have this bill open and sent to a cust or to a vendor, and I'm able to record that I've paid for this bill. Um, now again, what John was talking about earlier with Forte, uh, the Forte integration for books is kind of unique in that it would actually let me pay for this bill with ACH if I have that turned on. So if you're really looking to do everything within Zoho Books, it might be worth taking a look at Forte so that you could actually do your outbound payments through the same interface. Um, what we'll see here as well, 
up at the top is the timeline of the record. So essentially we can see that a bill was raised for a certain amount. Um, and then we've received, we actually sent out two payments on this bill um, that then marked it as totally paid. So you can do really as many payments as you need to against one individual bill. All righty. And then lastly here, the little section for the payments made. Um, so we'll see here, unfortunately, there are not any like credit card options to pay bills um, within the books right now. Um, but you do have the option of either doing an ACH hosted through Forte, um, or you could mark it as paid via a check or paid manually and offline. And Nathan or Val, chime in if I'm wrong here, but I think you can actually print your check through the bill interface if you so wanted. You can kind of define a template and do it that way. Yes, 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 yes definitely. Um, and also, um, and D-Raj, I don't know if his mic's still on, but um, this it's something we could definitely dive in later down the road on like a live demo as well, kind of be a little bit more flexible, mm -hmm. kind of show an example of that, but yeah. Awesome. Yeah, th this is actually available just to confirm what Tyler said. You, you, mm -hmm. you can you can pay yep. your bills via check, which means you can print a check from Zoho Books. We have, we have a template that you can customize mm -hmm. and you can officially purchase checks from a provider as well again directly from zoho books um what i've got a family member using zoho books and what they're doing to use their credit card or debit card to pay for stuff for their business is they're integrated to zoho expense which allows and i'll put i'll put a link to that, that in the chat and use that from there and that works okay yes sorry about that uh tyler i think we answered that a little bit longer no than no worries did. no worries i just wanted to confirm so there's so much functionality sometimes it's like yeah. i think it does that but let me yeah, no, no, no. that's the <laughs> biggest the biggest thing with zoho is like i said it's a, the limit is your imagination mm -hmm. because there's something out there yep. that it can do if you have imagination and the ability to write deluge code you can make it do just about anything. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely um, and with that, I mean, I think we've kind of wrapped up the core elements of our walkthrough. Of course, there's a million more things we could cover. I know there are some really good questions in chat that uh, give me ideas of videos to make on the Zanata YouTube channel to cover those specifically. Um, but I think now would probably be a good time with about eight minutes left to jump into q and I don't know, Nathan or Val, if you guys want to highlight and answer any questions from the, uh, the viewers here. Yeah, I think... Um... <sighs> Let's go through it to get what, how much time do we have left? We have about eight minutes or so. So there's a quite a bit of questions and we've been going through it. Um, FYI, I did put in the checks um, help doc in the chat section. So yeah, let's go ahead and see if we can answer some questions and let's go. Yeah, they, they did have that, but on about, uh, that's, demonstrating the quoting see what they're not here. Um, can I project this? Does this work? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a... Um, um, so we had a good question from Amber. Is there any problem with skipping purchase orders and adding items directly to a bill? Um, really, the, the reason you'd want to use purchase orders, Amber, is if you care a lot about physical stock. Um, Zoho Books, and especially once you tie it to inventory, calculates stock two different ways, accounting and physical. Um, for accounting stock, the bill is the thing that's going to actually increase your stock on hand when you raise and open a bill, meaning like you have an outgoing flow of cash that's going to happen or already has happened for that inventory. Um, the difference is if you wanted to do a physical receive um, to increase your physical stock on hand separately from accounting stock, like if you want to track those differently, um, then you're going to want to have purchase orders so that you can have that proper link to a physical receive. Um, mm -hmm. So in the same way that like a sales order links the accounting and physical sides of a sale, uh, the purchase order links the accounting and physical sides of a purchase. Um, so it depends on what's important to you for tracking, um, but mm -hmm. we recommend generally using them and if there's like a workflow problem, like a too many clicks problem, that can generally be solved with a little bit of custom code. Yeah. And also the, and I'm sure John sees this a lot, but uh, you can create kind of a bottleneck if you don't have proper uh, purchase orders and sales orders and all that stuff. And kind of what Tyler was saying, where you can basically just not know, you can overcommit essentially is um, 
a go- good way to look at it, and it, would, it could impact your cash flow at the end of the day if you're not careful. Let's see. But yeah, so yeah, I guess there is a lot of unanswered questions. Let's see. I think it's best if Tyler, you kind of go through there. Let me. I'll, I'll go through it as well. Uh, but we are. Uh, let's see. We have one here in the banking section. One of the banks we have added is not showing. Uh, is mm-hmm. it possible to show it? It should be under the search. If it's supported, it'll be under the search function on mm-hmm. the banking page. Um, I yeah, I will add. Um, sorry to interrupt, Tyler. So. The bank feeds are from Yo. What I've, I've, the name's escaping me. Yodley, uh, but basically you can reach out to support, and we can see if we can get that hooked up. Say if it's like a random. I don't mean to say random as it if your credit union's not important, but <laughs> say if it's a a credit union that's not you know very well known. Um, you can reach out to support, and they can help you out through that because I've seen that in the past, and they can you in contact with um the organization over there as well as with uh, the name's escaping me but i'll pull that up real yeah. quick yeah. okay yardley so i don't know why i couldn't say that i was thinking yardley which is close but um but yardley. yeah so it's yardley, let right? us know and if that's an issue that's something you definitely <laughs> need to address early on mm-hmm. uh, rather than yeah. i don't know you're you do the migration and all that stuff definitely try to get your banks integrated as soon as possible yeah um, I have one more here. It can project. This is a pretty good one. Uh, this is a question from Aldo. Uh, I like this one because it kind of leads into the Zoho ecosystem. So, you know, they're managing projects. It looks like from a, another question kind of lower, they are using Zoho projects. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're using it to basically fulfill anything that's sold. And they're looking for, you know, how do we know what's our work in progress, our estimated versus actual, right? Um, so a couple of things there. We oftentimes implement this type of flow where you kind of have a CRM deal go through that defines what's on a project. And once you Mm -hmm. win it, you start a project inside of Zoho projects and you kick off an invoice inside of Zoho books. Um, Mm -hmm. By doing it that way, you create the path between an invoice to a deal to a project where you've now kind of linked your receivable versus the, the cost basis from projects with time billing and expenses there. And then oftentimes we'll pull all of that into Zoho Analytics and kind of roll up all the data to give you those types of um, those types of metrics. Yeah, definitely. And I do see a question kind of talking about more. So we are running a little bit. We only have three more minutes. You have um, a poll to do, right, as well? Yeah, we do have a poll. Let's go ahead and get to the last slide. And I did see a question as I'm taking control away from you, Tyler. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, did see a question about more webinars over Zoho Inventory, Zoho One, all these things. Uh, we are working on stuff in the pipeline, and I would just ask in the evaluation, just let us know what you want us to cover, and we'd be happy to do more webinars. And Zanata, I'm sure, would be back on with something else, yeah. a different sort of webinar. Definitely over. We want to do one over the full suite, kind of what. Uh, Tyler was saying just because it is very important to kind of see the full picture of what Zoho has to offer. And that kind of leads us into the type of partners Zanata is and how much they've worked and been a part of. And mm-hmm. here's their contact information. Uh, definitely reach out to them or join their YouTube channel and their uh, newsletter as well. They have a lot of helpful resources, weekly newsletters and also weekly YouTube and uh, well, it's like a live session or. Yeah, so we do a we do a weekly podcast where we cover mm-hmm. every single update to every single Zoho app on a weekly mm-hmm. basis. And then we also do monthly product webinars that are structured kind of mm-hmm. like this. So I know there are some questions about Zoho One, Zoho Inventory, if there are webinars mm-hmm. on that. Uh, mm-hmm. This is my shameless plug here. Uh, if you mm-hmm. jump to youtube.com slash Zanata, we've got a whole bunch of different webinars and tutorials on really most Zoho applications. Um, mm-hmm. So that's a good place to start. Yeah, definitely. And I'll launch the last poll question. And if you'd like Sonata to reach out to you about any Zoho service, or you, you can just be in contact with them, they would be happy to just t- give you a quick chat and just let you know kind of what their thoughts are. And if you're going in the right direction, or maybe you should pause and think before you move over to Zoho or something. Uh, definitely in the handout section as well, you'll see Zanata's YouTube channel, like uh, Tyler mentioned their newsletter, you'll see our webpage and Zoho Books webpage, and also uh, a PDF of today's slides. Uh, Definitely download that PDF and 
subscribe to the free newsletter just because it's great, helpful resources and everything. Um, so we're about to end this session. I do want to say thank you to Tyler and John. I appreciate it. Thanks you guys for having us. Yeah, you, you do a great job and I like how streamlined it is. And it does. My mind is very all over the place. <laughs> so I like having it very organized and we can just go through one thing at a time. Uh, so I do appreciate it. And like I said, if you um, need a CPE or if you would like to fill out the evaluation, let us know what kind of sessions you want us to cover in the future. Um, fill out the evaluation will pop up after I end the session and I'm going to end the session here shortly. Uh, thank you for everybody joining today. Thank you, Val, for joining and D-Raj for helping us with support. Tyler and John as well. I really appreciate it. Yep. Thanks again uh, for having us and thanks everyone for watching. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Guys and gals, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.